Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Berry. How are you today, Chris? I'm doing great. Chris, as one of the top experts, of course, in clean tech, uh, one of our well-known speakers with technology medals, can you tell us a little bit about how the impact of the Powerall battery by Tesla last week is going to affect demand in the sector? Well, overall, I mean, it's going to affect uh, different metals differently. Obviously, it's going to push up lithium, it's going to push up cobalt, and it will probably have a material effect on graphite as well. Those are sort of the big three. Uh, I think one of the metals that is overlooked uh, with respect to batter the battery business is copper, and that's another one that I'm particularly bullish on out over the next, say, three or five years. So let me make sure I heard this properly. I haven't heard you promote copper before, and maybe I didn't listen properly. So you're hot for copper. I'd like to know more. Well, you know, copper is is much different uh, than some of the technology metals or the energy metals that I've covered in the past. You know, you've got a situation where the lithium market globally is about 160,000 tons a year, and copper is 23 million. Okay, so. Uh, the, for all of the press that lithium gets, it really pales in comparison from a demand perspective. But, you know, when you start thinking about copper's uh, ubiquity uh, in terms of building out electrical infrastructure, not to mention electric vehicles, uh, you know, the statistics that I have seen say that you need about 150 pounds of copper per full electric vehicle. So when you start to think about demand, potential demand growth rates for full EVs. I mean, I've seen statistics that say by 2025, which is in 10 years, uh, if electric vehicles are 10% of the global automotive fleet, you're going to need about an additional million tons of copper per year. So that puts that in perspective. And a million tons a year is about the size of Escondida, which is one of the largest copper mines in the world. And so it's interesting because you can see that the demand is there and because copper prices have been depressed in recent years because of China slowing down and so on and so forth, the the funding, if you will, for exploration and development of, of new mines just hasn't kept up with the demand. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm really bullish over the next five years. Well, I can see why I want you to be one of my keynote speakers at next year's Technology Metal Summit. So further to this, if this is the kind of mind-blowing demand for copper that we're going to need globally for electric vehicles, what's going to happen to graphite? Well, graphite is a little bit different. Again, it's uh, you know it's about a million and a half tons a year, roughly, from a from a demand perspective. So it's much larger than again lithium, as I mentioned before. It's about the same size as I think the nickel market. Uh, you know, again, you're you're going to need more graphite uh, if this electric vehicle revolution really does have legs, and I think it probably does. Uh, even aside from Tesla. So, you know, I think one of the challenges with graphite is obviously finding the right deposit in the right part of the world with the right type of graphite that could fit into the battery business. And you also have to keep in mind that synthetic graphite is, is in my opinion, at least a threat to the natural graphite business. So you have to formulate sort of an opinion of how this is all going to work together going forward. But yes, you will need more graphite going forward, undoubtedly. Speaking of opinions, you had me all pumped up on cobalt at the beginning of the year, Chris. Can you give us an update on what's happening about uh, the magic blue metal? Well, you know, again, it's I, I've gone out sort of on a limb and said this in the past. I said if, if these electric vehicle projections are in the battery business, I should say, are going to blow up and, and fail, it's going to be because these battery makers aren't able to secure a reliable supply of cobalt. Uh, and I still believe that. And I think, you know, before the end of this year, we're going to know a lot more about the source of supply, where it's coming from and where it's intended to come from. Um, you haven't seen much movement in the, let's just say the North American cobalt space. There are only three potential producers and they're each several years away. Uh, so, you know, again, I think if there's a pinch point in the battery supply chain going forward, it's, it's definitely cobalt. It's not lithium. It's not graphite. It's not nickel. It's not copper. In doing all this research that you do, traveling around the world, reviewing all this different technology and markets regularly, are there any surprises that we should, as investors, be aware of, say, in the next quarter or two that's going to happen in this market, Chris? 
Well, <clears throat> I think I think there are some macro trends or macro factors you want to keep your eye on. Um, you know, and one of those is cost declines, in particular cost declines for batteries and cost declines for energy that can integrate with batteries. And I'm speaking specifically to solar. Solar technology has uh, plummeted. And so, you know, I've talked a lot from a macro perspective about what's going on in the global economy. Is there inflation? Is there deflation? You know, aside from that, there's there's good deflation and there's bad deflation. And you're seeing good deflation in terms of the cost of energy. So we've seen the price of oil, for example, go from $115 a barrel last summer to about $60 a barrel right now. And again, like I mentioned before, you've seen the cost of solar and other associated types of technologies uh, fall precipitously, actually fall faster and more consistently. And so the bridge there, of course, in terms of integrating solar into the existing electricity grid has to do with batteries. So you've seen battery prices fall, You've seen the prices for solar fall. And so I'm paying particular attention to that whole supply chain and all of those issues as well. Well, as always, Chris, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.